Good evening, I'm Lee Zurich. And I'm Meg Gatto. We begin with breaking news involving the mayor's security detail team and an officer currently under investigation. Yeah, tonight the New Orleans federal consent decree monitor confirms in December someone in city government tried to get NOPD officer Jeffrey Vappi reinstated to Mayor Cantrell's executive protection team while Vappi was under investigation by the NOPD. Vappi was at the center of a series of Fox 8 investigations after a video from a public security camera showed him spending long hours both on and off the clock inside of a city-owned apartment with Mayor LaToya Cantrell. More than 1,000 hours of video revealed he was the only member of her protection team to enter the apartment. As our stories began to air, the NOPD reassigned VAPI and the department's Public Integrity Bureau, or PIB, launched an investigation into his timesheets. However, late last year, uh, on former NOPD Chief Sean Ferguson's last day in the job, Fox 8 received a tip that VAPI had been moved back to Cantrell's protection team. Sources told us the federal consent decree monitor helped stop it. At the time, an NOPD spokesperson denied it. Now, months after we first started asking questions, we submitted a question to the consent decree monitor during a virtual public meeting tonight. Here's the question and his answer. In December 2022, was there an effort made to put Officer Jeffrey Vappi back on the mayor's executive protection detail? If so, what role did the consent decree monitor play in stopping this? Um, I just I just want to caveat this by saying uh, that there is, as the media has reported, an investigation into um, Officer uh, Jeffrey Vappi, and we never talk about ongoing investigations. So my answer has nothing to do with that investigation. But to the specific question, uh, the answer is yes. There was an effort to put Officer Vappi back on the mayor's executive protection team prior to the completion of the PIB investigation. When the monitoring team found out about it, we reached out to multiple members of the NOPD um, leadership team who quickly and effectively quashed that effort. All right, tonight we're joined by Dillard political analyst Dr. Robert Collins and Fox 8 legal analyst Joe Respondi for more on all of this. Thank you both for being here tonight. Joe, I want to start with you. You've got a superior and a subordinate who are being investigated for their working relationship. Is it appropriate for this attempt to put the subordinate back under the control of the superior, Vappi, back to the mayor's executive protection team while the investigation is ongoing? Is that a trick question? No, of course not. What you have here is a supervisor and a subordinate. What you should do is take the subordinate out of the situation and away from the person that has dominion and control. They did that. This was a situation where sexual misconduct was alleged, where payroll fraud was alleged, and they took, took this person away. That, you should wait till at least the investigation has been completed and maybe ideally never put those two people back together again, ideally. To bring that person back under the dominion and control of the supervisor while the investigation is going on, multiple investigations, is wildly inappropriate. And if it's later determined that the person in the supervisory position had anything to do with bringing the subordinate back in, that's an even greater sin and it's, it's HR law, Human Relations Law 101, you should not do that. All right, uh, before we get to Robert, let, let's do this. So uh, on January 4th, the mayor was asked specifically about this. Hopefully you'll be able to hear the question, but the question was, did you ask former Chief Ferguson to return Officer Jeffrey Vapidi to your security detail? This was asked in a news conference January 4th. Let's hear that question and the mayor's answer at that point. Did you ask uh, former Chief uh, Ferguson or current Chief Woodward to return Officer Jeffrey Vappi to your security detail? No, what I did was making sure that the investigation uh, is moving, it's moving, and it needs to, and I believe that it will be coming uh, to a close. But it's about fairness, it's about process, and making sure that we're doing the right thing and definitely not wanting any of that to be caught up in any uh, changes. Let's talk to uh, Dr. Robert Collins from Dillard now. So you hear the consent decree monitor saying one thing, you hear the mayor saying essentially there wasn't an effort to put him back on. How do you unpack all of this? Well, you know, Lee, from a, from a political standpoint, 
I, I almost am, am starting to feel like we're in a Batman movie and, and this is Gotham City. So uh, riddle me this. Knowing all of the scrutiny that's going on right now on this police officer and on the mayor, and knowing the sort of red flags that it's going to raise, why would anyone in City Hall in any position ask for this police officer to be put back onto the mayor's police detail, knowing that it's going to immediately raise all sort of red flags? None of this makes any sense. This is just bizarre. And let's be so. The, the, the consent decree monitor didn't necessarily say the mayor did it, but, but the, the NOPD, high brass in the NOPD, helped him stop it. So for, for, for someone in City Hall to make that request about BAPI, it would only be probably the mayor or one or two other people that would have the power to call the chief and say, put him back on the executive protection team. It, it would have to be someone in a position of high authority. I mean, you know, I mean, a, you know, a, a regular rank and file police officer could not do it. So, but I'm just, I'm, I don't understand why anyone would do it. Why anyone in a position of authority, uh, what authority would do it? Because it seems like they would have to know it's going to raise all sort of red flags. I mean, you know, there's no way you can do it secretly because once he's on the mayor's detail, he's going to show up in public yeah. events. You can't do it secretly, and then all the red flags are going to be raised and they're going to get all kind of questions. It just it doesn't make any sense. From a, just from a political standpoint, if they're trying to protect the mayor, I mean, politically, it's just insane. Joe, we know that federal judge Susie Morgan was listening in to this federal dec dec consent decree monitor hearing tonight. Um, the city is obviously trying to get out from this federal consent decree. How will this affect that? Well, you squirted, squirted vinegar in the eye of the judge because, as you've all reported before, the city comes back and the police come back and say, look, look what we've done. Look at all the improvements we've made. This, this is like sliding back. Uh, it shows that, that it, there's a certain arrogance that, that accompanies what this was, appears to be about. And so, yeah, I'll tell you, if you want to get off of that consent decree, this does not move that effort forward. All right, so we reached out to the mayor's office tonight for a comment. And I, I think, the, you know, instead of just showing the comment, I think it's important to actually show the, the question we asked them going into this. So you see the question on the top, who directed this effort to have Officer Vappi reinstated to executive protection? And this is the response we got from the city. At no time since she was sworn in has Chief Woodfork attempted to reassign Officer Vappi to executive protection. It's want to point out, you know, we didn't ask about Chief Woodfork. Our tip back in December didn't even involve Chief Woodfork. It said that it was Ferguson under Ferguson when this happened. Robert, what do you make of this? You know, the question followed up by the statement here. Well, uh, of course, Joe, Joe's the legal analyst, but it sounds like to me they were they were trying to to uh, give a specific language that that was going to uh, protect the chief. And, uh, and, and of course, they didn't say exactly who, who made the, the request to reassign. So, and, it, and it sounds like they're specifically trying to avoid asking the question to reassign. Or answering, yeah. answering the question. Yeah, or to, and, and to, you know, they're, I mean, they're clearly trying to avoid giving any information that's going to get them in trouble. You, you don't dodge questions from federal judges, though. And if a federal judge, in this particular case, asks that question, the answer better be the correct one, the truthful one. And look, I, I just think like, you know, big picture here, you know, this is the consent decree monitor. Th this is the person who controls a lot of stuff too. And, and the city has to deal with him. Um, it, it, it would be hard for them to say he is wrong here too, politically and legally as well too. I mean, from the city's point of view, what do they, the Cantrell administration, what do you do? <laughs> well, what, what, well, what you do is you don't you don't dig yourself into this hole is what, what you don't do. They've they've dug themselves into a hole now. So it seems like to me, I mean, I mean if you know, I mean, if I was still working in a, in a political media job, I, I would tell them transparency is your is your best friend right now because if there's no transparency people are going to assume the worst P people are going to assume that something really bad is happening and there's some corruption going on so you know i, I mean at this point their 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 best uh, you know, the best advice I would give them was, was just to come clean. I mean, who, you know, who made the request? If the mayor didn't make the request, who, you know, who made the request? Who, who was that person? Because if we don't find out who that is, you know, we're probably going to assume it was the mayor, even, even though we don't, we don't really know. All right, Robert Collins, Joe Responti. Did you want to add one thing? Just word salads like that aren't going to work in a federal courthouse. 
And if, if this, they're still under a federal judge, and if they ask that question, they have to give the truthful answer. Good point. All right. All right. Thanks, both of you.